New research published this year in the journal Clinical Chemistry shows damaged male DNA is a factor in recurrent miscarriages. Joining us this morning is Dr. Parvis Kavusi. He is a reproductive urologist at St. David South. He'll to talk more about that research. Good morning, doctor. Thank Good you so morning. much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Although we did say that this is a new study that just came out this year. It is more information that is now underscoring what doctors have been uh, thinking about for a long time. That's right. So. There have been a number of studies that have already looked at this factor and seen that men that have high levels of DNA damage in their sperm can contribute to higher miscarriage rates, especially with couples with recurrent miscarriages, or we term recurrent pregnancy loss, which there's a number of definitions for, but by the American Society for Reproductive Medicine guidelines, when a couple has two miscarriages or more, we categorize them as a recurrent miscarriage, a recurrent pregnancy loss couple. And that's when we need to really raise an eyebrow and look for some of these factors. Uh, so what can we do to be able to, to curb this and bring those numbers down? So really the important part is having both sides of the couple evaluated. Because certainly there could be something on the female side, but there could be something on the male side. So we have to check both to make sure that we're getting that couple the best chance they can to get a healthy pregnancy. So now we can test the DNA of sperm. So for example, at our andrology laboratory, we can actually do DNA fragmentation testing. And if we find high levels of DNA fragmentation or damage in these couples where the men are contributing, there are things that a lot of times it can be done to actually decrease that DNA damage to help those couples get a better chance to take home a baby together. Uh, Ed, what can be done to decrease those chances? So a lot of it is looking for the cause. Um, things like infections can be treated with antibiotics. So if there's evidence infections with increased white blood cells around the sperm, that actually produces what are called reactive oxygen species that damage the DNA. Some men have anatomic issues, things like dilated veins called varicoceles that surround the testicle that damage the DNA. We can repair those surgically, and that brings DNA damage rates down. And there's more compiling data that men that don't have a cause that we can find like this, if we actually take testicular sperm with couples when we do IVF or in vitro fertilization, will improve their pregnancy rate and decrease their miscarriage rate because we actually get healthier sperm directly from the cells of the testicle than we do in the semen when men have elevated DNA levels of damage. At what point does a couple have to tell their doctor? Can you check the male partner as well? I think, you know, whenever a couple wants to get checked, it's perfectly reasonable and appropriate to. If we're going strictly by guidelines, when they've had two miscarriages, then it's time certainly to get both sides checked. So the woman should see a reproductive endocrinologist and the male should see a reproductive urologist. So we get these high level testing and help guide them in a way to not go through this heartbreaking you know, recurrent issue. Right, you talk about that emotional toll that it is taking on both sides. It is, it's a very difficult thing for couples to go through. In reproductive health, this is probably one of the more difficult, challenging scenarios from a emotional standpoint for both sides of the couple. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking every time they go through this. And you say that we, this, we are just uh, breaking the cusp of the kind of research that is needed. Yes, and also about the testing. So if you look at how we've evaluated men for fertility, it's actually been the same since the 1600s, since the first guy ever looked at sperm under the microscope and said, they're there, this, how many are there, they move around, they look nice. Now we know there's a lot more elegant testing that's needed to understand the functionality, the integrity of the DNA, you know, looking at things like oxidative stress, other factors that can in fact impact the couple's fertility besides just the bulk numbers of the semen parameters, which are important, but we need to learn more on the functionality of these cells, not just how many are there, do they move around. Moving into the year 2019, as you say. Yes. Um, if a couple uh, does need some help, what's the first step that they should take? So the first step is really getting both sides evaluated. If, they, if we see recurrent pregnancy losses, it's reaching out to a fertility group in their community that serves both sides of the couple. All right, Dr. Parviz Kavusi with St. David's South. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time. Thank you.